Okay, this problem here, I'm going to go over how to use the mean squared error as a diagnostic tool to see how good your forecast is. And, um, of course, forecasting is very important, uh, especially for business, in order to, uh, if you can forecast well, it can uh, help you earn more profits, for one thing. Also, it can help lower costs and that type of thing. So anyway, so this is a problem on a 15-4 out of your textbook for, the, for my quantitative methods class uh, for uh, fall 2009, or spring 2019. And this is like that problem, but I changed the values because I don't want to actually do the problem for you. I'd like to have you do it yourself. So I made it similar, but not exactly the same. So this is read the problem. It has these months and these values. And... It wants us to find a for it wants us to forecast I should change this to month ten, right? Because th this problem has ten ten months in it. So we want to know what the forecast is for month ten for both of these. And the first one we want to use the most recent value as a forecast. And we we'll use the average value of the forecast, but we want to find the mean squared error using that too. So uh, just let me just get right into this and I'll show you how this works. It's actually very simple. So we can copy this down. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do part A. We're going to use the most recent value as a forecast. So I'm going to type in here forecast. And the most recent value, well, I can't put a forecast in for one because I don't have a most recent value. But for, they mean time T minus one, right? So this would actually be the forecast for this month should have been 12 because that was the most recent value. And then you can just drag this down. And we can drag it down one ex extra one and we can put in 10 here now. So you can see that the, so all it is is just shifting these by one. All right. Because the most recent one for, the, I'm, I'm seeing right here, this just happened. My most recent, my forecast for next, for next uh, period is what I had last period, right? So, um, now you can, you might, now most people, most businessmen, before they start doing the numbers, they're, they're really the best idea when you're doing forecasting is to take your data and we can go here and go insert a scatter plot. Or maybe we will do, let me do control Z. Since this is a forecast, we can go, um, we can, in, not, we'll go insert a scatter plot, but we'll do the one with the lines, all right? So we can see what's going on. So it's really good to look at a picture of what's going on. I like to always graph it. So our forecast for month, our forecast here for month 10 was 15, which, you know, I don't know. It seems like it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. That may be right, but most of the time it goes up after it's been down. So maybe the forecast should have been higher. We don't know. So anyway, but it's always good to look at your data, even though this problem doesn't tell you to look at it. It's kind of interesting to look at it. So that's my forecast. So I answered the second part of this first, right, didn't I? So that's my answer for part B. But we, but let's keep going because we want to find the mean squared error. So before we find the mean squared error, we have to find the normal error. And the error is just going to be equal to my value I got, actually got minus the value I forecasted. And we're only going to go for the ones that we have data on both of them. So months two through nine, I can do my error. And now I can do my error squared. Remember we were talking, MSE stands for mean squared error. And the error squared is just equal to this squared. Okay, and we can copy that down. And uh, so normally when you find mean, mean means average. This is squared error. Why did we square? Because we wanted all our errors to be positive. Because if you, if you, um, it doesn't really make much. You have to either take the absolute value or square. Because because these cancel each other out. The negative and positive will cancel each other out. So you either got to square or take the absolute value. That's normally what you do. In this case, they want the squared error. And so now it's now to take the mean. Normally you take them all and you add them together. So I'm going to put the sum down here. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go auto sum. So that's the, I could call this uh, the sum squared error, right? And now finally I can do the mean squared error. Actually, let me do both of these. Copy, paste. So now I can do the mean squared error. The mean squared error equal my sum of squared error. 
divided by the number of errors I had, the number of squared errors I have. Um, I like to use a count function sometimes. I'm looking for how many of something, so we can just go count, and we want to count how many of these there are. So that's my mean squared error. And then, uh, like I said, we already ca calculated the forecast for month 10. That's equal to this. So those are my two answers for A. So it's pretty simple. So now we found how well our forecast did, and then we forecasted month 10 in addition. All right, so now let's do the second one. Let's do the B. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, just let, let's copy this down, and we can just change it. That's the beauty of Excel. We could just repurpose what we've already done, because a lot of this we've already done. The only thing we want to change is this forecast in here, because we're forecasting in a different way. Now we're going to use, uh, now for B, we want to use uh, the average of the, for A, we used, the most recent, right? Now we're going to use the average, and and now we can call this B instead of A, right? All right. So now do the average for of the last. Uh, now I can't do the average of this one. You know, for, I'm sitting here. And I only have one of them, so this is still equal to the previous one. This one I can average these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and equal average, and it's going to be the average of these two. Now, as I go down, I'm going to have more data available. And I'm, so I want to always stay at 12, but it's going to get longer and longer and longer as I go down. So I'm going to click on the middle between here. I'm going to hit F4, which will put dollar signs in there. So that makes this top one absolute. And then the bottom one is going to move as I copy it down. You'll see what the hell this works in a second. And then I can drag this down. And you can see if I click on this one, it's the average of that. If I click on this one, it's the average of that. If I click on this one, it's, so it's the average of the. It says the average of all the data available, right? So that's how that. This, the, when you put dollar signs, that makes it an absolute reference, so it won't move. This other one, we want to move it as we go down. That's why we didn't. We didn't put dollar signs on this part. Okay. So now it automatically, it automatically calculated everything. Also, it square it. It subtracted it. It squared it. It added it, and then it took the average. So that's the beauty of Excel. We were able to. Uh, repurpose what we did previously, right? Now, for part C, which appears better? Uh, well, which one has a lower air? So we could say, uh, which appears better? B, because the MSE was lower. All right, so we could look up here, and we could see where would 15 be. Remember the first one what was 15. So 15 would be like right here, right? And 17 would be right here. So I might say 17 because it goes up, down, up, up, down, down, up. You know, so... It might go up, you know, looking at the trend, it might go up. But, you know, it's hard to guess. We're trying to predict the future, so who knows what's going to happen in the future. But according mathematically, this is doing us a better job. This one seems to do a better job than this one. Okay? In this case. Remember, you know, every every case is different. So anyway, so hopefully that helps. It shows you how to calculate the mean square error and use it to... Uh, Check out what to, check out if your method of forecasting, which method of forecasting is working better. All right, so I'm going to have my picture appear up here as always. So um, if you haven't subscribed, click on my picture to subscribe. Please like this video. It encourages me to do more. And um, thank you very much.